Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael and you're watching IDB. In this video, we're showing you even more iOS 16 features. So you guys seem to love these videos, so we're gonna keep them coming as long as you keep watching them. And I really like this first feature, so let's go ahead and jump in right now. This first one has to do with customizing your wallpaper experience on iOS 16. So if you click on add a new wallpaper, there's a new option in iOS 16 called Photo Shuffle. And if you click on this, you're able to have a constantly changing wallpaper based on certain parameters that you set up. So I only wanna see wallpapers of nature and cities, so I'll just unselect people. And then you can also choose what's called shuffle frequency. You can choose to have the iPhone do this for you, so hourly or daily. And you can also have the wallpaper change every time you lock your phone, and also my favorite, every time you tap on the screen. So I'll choose on tap and then click on use featured photos. If I click on add, it takes a little while to set it as my wallpaper just because it has to get all the photos ready. But once it sets this as your wallpaper, you're able to have an all new wallpaper every time you tap on your lock screen. So if I swipe down here, you can see I can tap to simply change my wallpaper just like this. The next feature is inside of messages and new in iOS 16, you're now able to have a tap back reaction to an SMS message. This was previously only reserved for iMessage and now this works with SMS as well. You know that it's an SMS tap back because the bubble is green instead of blue. It works pretty much the same way on your end. All you have to do is double click on the message and you can add a response just like this. The other person receiving the message, however, is not gonna have this little animation on the bubble. Your iPhone is simply going to send another text message saying that you reacted to that message. So it's a nice feature and it makes your texting experience a little bit better. The next feature is inside of Calendar, and this one is really handy for me. New in iOS 16 is you can now copy and paste calendar events. So no longer do you have to create the exact same event from scratch. If you have the same event that keeps repeating week to week, you can now simply copy and paste that event. So I have an example event here in my calendar, and if I wanna copy and paste this onto the next day, for example, all I have to do is press and hold on this event, and you can see we have a whole bunch of new options. If I click on copy, I can go to the next day and then click on add new event, and you can see right there from the clipboard, I'm able to paste that right here into my next day. So this makes it a lot easier if you have repeating events in your calendar. The next feature is also inside of Calendar, and iOS 16 now supports a lot more view options when your iPhone is rotated horizontally. So previously in iOS 15, the only option that you had was your week view. It would show the seven days of the week, and you wouldn't have this tab here at the top. But now in iOS 16, you can view your individual day, you can see the entire month, and you can even see an entire overview of the year if you want to. So this is really handy for people that like to use their calendar in horizontal mode, and it's really useful if you have a larger phone like the Pro Max. So for the next feature, we're gonna go inside of settings and then click on your name at the top. If you click on iCloud, you'll see there's now a new option in iOS 16 for a custom email domain. And you can actually purchase a new domain for your email right on your iPhone. You can see we can use a domain we already own and we can also buy a new email domain right here. If I click on buy a domain, we can test this out and see which domains are available. So if I want my email to end in uh, Michael B, I can just type that in. And then if I click on search, you can see it's gonna show the price of how much this email domain is going to cost. So we have a few different domains available. And if you wish to purchase these, you can select them and it'll redirect you to the website that you can use to buy it. The next feature is for those of you who have an Apple Watch and also use focus modes on your iPhone. So in iOS 16, you're now able to change your watch face depending on what focus mode you're in. So this is what it's gonna look like if you haven't set it up yet. You're able to choose a custom lock screen, home screen, and also a new watch face. So if I click on choose, it's gonna show all of the watch faces you have set up on your Apple Watch. And the example that I like to use is I have my watch face change whenever I'm at the gym starting a workout. So if I click on fitness, you can see I have it set up to show the activity face whenever I go into my fitness focus. So I'll show you this working in real time. I'll bring in my Apple Watch. You can see this is the current face. And if I go into control center and I start my fitness focus, you can see it's going to change my Apple Watch face just like this.
This next feature is pretty small, but it is one that I'm probably going to be using quite a bit on my iPhone. And you can now add pretty much anything right into a quick note on your iPhone. So for this example, I'm using apple.com and I clicked on the share sheet and there's a new button now in iOS 16 to add this to a quick note. So this is a really convenient way to save something for later inside of notes. So next up is an extension of a feature that I've already shown you on this channel. So you guys are probably already familiar with the option in iOS 16 to remove a subject from the background. Here I have a photo of my iPad and if I press and hold on the subject, I have the option to move it around if I want to, I can drag it anywhere and I can also copy it or share it right from here inside of photos. This also works though inside of Safari. So if I go to Google here, I have just an image of a banana and if I press and hold on this, we now have the option to copy subject. So if I only want the PNG version of this image, I don't want the background, all I have to do is click on copy subject and then I can paste this anywhere I want to. So inside of notes, I can go here and I can paste just the PNG image that I copied from Google. Next up is inside of Apple Notes and it's a new feature called Find and Replace. So I have an example note right here and if you click on the menu icon on the top right, you can click on Find in Note. Now this feature is not new. This just allows you to search for anything inside of the note. However, what is new is if you click on the search icon, you can change this to find and replace. So for example, if I wanna change every instance of the word Samsung and replace it with Apple, all I have to do is type in find Samsung and replace with Apple, and then I can do it for each instance of that word just like this. Our second to last feature is inside the home application and a pretty small change, but one I really like is the option to now make the size of your accessories bigger. So if you click on the menu icon, you can click on edit home view and whatever accessory you click on, you're now gonna see a button that allows you to make it bigger. If I click on it, you can see I can now make this accessory a lot bigger and more prominent. So if I wanna make my uh, studio light strip a bit bigger, all I have to do is click on it and then click on the enlarge button and now that button is a lot bigger and easier to press. And the final feature I'm gonna show you is for the batteries widget on your lock screen. So I bet a ton of you didn't even know that you could do this, but when you add the batteries widget onto your lock screen, you're actually now able to tap on the widget itself and change which accessory you see. So by default, the switch is going to be set to automatic. So all you have to do is turn that off and then you get a list of all of your accessories that you can see the battery level for. So in this case, I'll choose my Apple Watch and then I can change whichever accessory I wanna see on my lock screen just like that. So that's gonna do it. Make sure to head down into the comments and tell me what your favorite feature was I covered in this video. If you are not subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe and also turn on notifications. That way you don't miss every single time we upload a new video. If you guys found this video informative or helpful, please drop a like on it as it does help us out a lot. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you next time.